Hi guys, welcome back to the video that I did ask for. For this video, I'm going to skip to Russia once again. Crafty battle on Russia and the title of this video. That we need to do something for the video. Very barbaric weapon, the horrific way Russia couldn't help the army in the war 2021. Just latest, pretty for the honor of the WWE War Talk Defense. I'll put the description in the description of the honor of the video. And the 2F1 or Buratino is a unique to Russian and self-propelled rocket launcher system or MRLS that has seen action in global attacks like Afghanistan, Tanzania, Iraq, and Syria. The use of food is completely This is incredible. And the information in the video was so amazing and allow us to, I will let you know also guys, we will be informed that thermal barrier means this is uh, what the phrase of the open back when the Russian were in Afghanistan. In Greek, all the word means is a hit and pressure, so terrible barrier, so it means hit and pressure, which is characteristic of explosives. The Russian came up with explosives intended to act more like a fuel air pressure. It produced a more sustained combo than hit and pressure than high uh, fuels. Um, it High explosive, each wood arsenal. Look at the magnificent benefits. And I work with a team to find other fuels to increase lethality. Walter Red reports the influence of heat blast over pressure tankers. This is an old news. So I think there will be like changing of this one, or I think there's a transition for the thermal barrier as well. And this is a great information also. So nice to know about this and terrible barrier. So, and I hope guys will be having fun. We want to see you on my channel. Just click on the subscribe button, click on the notification bell so that you'll be updated on our future uploads. And if you have some comments, suggestions related to Russian videos or any videos that you have suggest, drop it on the comment section so that we can find you all. Okay, guys, we'll go here from at the end. Windows 1 Buratino is a unique Russian self-propelled multiple rocket launcher system that has seen action in global hotspots like Afghanistan, Chechnya, Iraq, and Syria. Like the enormous 240mm 2S4 self-propelled mortar, the Windows 1 specialty is obliterating heavily fortified positions. Although some of these may be found in rural rebel strongholds and fortified caves, they have often been employed in heavily urbanized environments. It's gained a uniquely nasty reputation because of the horrifying effects of its fuel-air explosive warheads. To put it concisely, these are amongst the most devastating explosive weapons short of tactical nuclear weapons. TOS stands for Heavy Flame Thrower, which is only accurate in a literal sense, instead of projecting a stream of jellied gasoline, the TOS-1 launches a rocket carrying a fuel-air explosive. These were first employed by the United States in the Vietnam War because napalm wasn't destructive enough. Napalm munitions disperse a sticky, flaming liquid over a wide area. By contrast, a fuel air explosive detonates the very air itself. A small explosive inside the flame munition spreads a chemical cloud in the air through an aerosol effect. The gaseous cloud seeps effortlessly into buildings and caves, and down into slit trenches. A secondary explosive then ignites the cloud, causing a massive and long lasting explosion. While the heat generated by FAE causes lethal burns in a wide radius, roughly 200 by 300 meters, the overpressure created by the sudden combustion of the air is even deadlier. The fiery blasts create a partial oxygen vacuum that kills and maims in a variety of grotesque ways and cannot be mitigated with body armor or hard cover. Oh. The pressure generated by a TOS-1 blast amounts to 427 pounds per square inch. For comparison, most conventional bomb blasts create roughly half that amount and regular air pressure is 14 pounds per inch too. Victims near the center of a TOS-1 blast radius are crushed to death. Further out, 
the overpressure can break bones, dislocate eyes, cause internal hemorrhaging, and rupture eardrums, bowels and other internal organs. It also sucks the air out of victims' lungs, possibly causing them to collapse, leading to death by suffocation. The United States was the first to use fuel air explosives in the Vietnam War, dropping them by air to clear helicopter landing zones and minefields, and later deploying oh, them as offensive weapons. In 2002, attempting to hunt down Osama bin Laden in the rugged mountains of Tora Bora, U.S. aircraft deployed thermobaric warheads on precision-guided missiles. The warheads would suck the oxygen out of the caves the Taliban fighters were hiding in. The Soviet Union adopted the weapons shortly after the United States did, using them in a border skirmish against the Chinese in 1969, and oh. employing both airdropped and ground-launched Fay on a large scale in the war in Chechnya. The proliferation of TOS-1 systems through global conflict zones ensures they will continue to see use in combat. Most of Russia's artillery weapons use a light armored vehicle chassis like that of the MTLB armored carrier. The 46 Hundos-1, on the other hand, uses the much heavier hull of a T-72 tank. There's a good reason, the original TOS-1 model only had a range of around 3 kilometers, meaning it would have to withstand hostile fire from all kinds of enemy weapon systems. The DOS-1 mounts a launch unit with 3230mm diameter rocket tubes. Oh. The prominence of the launch unit is what earned it the name Buratino, a long-nosed Pinocchio-like character in a children's story. The rockets can be fired individually or ripple-fired en masse in the space of 6 to 12 seconds. Seriously? The vehicle also mounts a targeting computer and a laser range finder. Two types of rockets are equipped, ones with conventional incendiary warheads, and the fuel air explosives discussed above. The sheer size of the rockets means that the TOS-1 requires not one but two TZMT reloading vehicles, all-terrain trucks equipped with cranes, each carrying a full additional load of rockets. The TOS-1 vehicle has no real counterpart in use by Western militaries. While there are all kinds of multiple rocket launch systems in use, such as the M142 HIMARS in use by the US Army to bombard ISIS in Iraq, they are all lightly armored weapons intended for long-range and direct fire. Oh, Furthermore, really? Such rocket artillery typically relies on cluster munitions or conventional high-explosive warheads, not incendiary ammunition. The Russian army, however, fields long-range multiple launch rocket systems like the Smirch and Uragan, capable of using incendiary warheads. The United States uses thermobaric warheads in smaller manned portable systems as well as larger air-launched munitions. Starting in 2001, Nutos 1A Sant Sepek, Burning Sun, vehicles began entering service, with a range of 6 kilometers. This is sufficiently long range to allow it to fire beyond retaliatory fire from the majority of anti-tank weapons. Oh, really? The new vehicle comes with an improved ballistics computer as well. Because it fires heavier 90 kilogram rockets, the number of launch tubes was reduced to 24. Oh. The DOS-1 and 1A are integrated into Russian nuclear biological chemical battalions. These units also field the RPO Ashmel. Bumblebee, man portable portable rocket launchers that fire smaller 90 mm thermobaric charges up to a range of 1000 meters or 1700 meters using the latest types. These are intended as bunker buster weapons as thermobaric warheads are particularly effective against structures and their occupants. Wow. The first combat use of the TOS-1 Buratino is recorded between 1988 and 1989 against Afghan rebels in the rugged terrain of the Panjshir Valley. However, it was in the 1999, the same year that the TOS-1 was first revealed to the public, that oh, the TOS-1 really? first made a name for itself in the siege of the Chechen capital of Grozny. After sustaining terrible losses attempting to assault Grozny's center during the first Chechen war, for the second war the Russian army surrounded the city with heavy artillery and tanks. It then dispatched small infantry teams to probe the Chechen defender. Once the Chechens opened fire, the artillery surrounding the city would pulverize the city blocks from which the fire originated. TOS-1s mm -hmm. played a major role in these bombardments, and were also appreciated for creating explosions liable to detonate mines and booby traps left behind by the Chechen fighters. Oh. The use of the TOS-1 to eradicate city blocks in Grozny caused a number of complaints about collateral damage. In one incident, a strike killed 37 locals and wounded over 200. That's sad. By the time the battle was over, the city had been reduced to a wasteland. At least four DOS ones were sold to Iraq in 2014, and they were first seen entering action against ISIS in the battle for Jerf al-Sakr in 2014. 
the battle was a victory for an Iraqi Shia militia, although how much the TOS once contributed to that is unclear. Later video footage shows TOS 1's Ripple firing rockets on targets nearby G, Iraq. The TOS 1s were also given to the Syrian Arab Army, which deployed them against various Syrian rebels. Most of the footage released appears to depict bombardment of rural areas such as the mountains around Latakia, rather than inner city locations. However, a TOS 1 unit was recorded being used in preparation for an offensive against the city of Hama, and this June. Opposition fighters posted a video apparently showing the destruction of TOS-1 near Hama by long-range anti-tank missiles. Oh. This highlights how the need to deploy the short-range TOS-1 closer the front line makes it vulnerable to such weapons. A TOS-1 was also spotted by the AS operating in a rebel training area in Luhansk in eastern Ukraine in 2015. Ukraine does not operate any TOS-1s, so the vehicle must be of Russian origin. There is no footage of the TOS-1 actually firing rockets in Ukraine but the Ukrainian government claims they were used in the artillery bombardment that leveled Donetsk International Airport, forcing oh. Ukrainian forces to withdraw in January 2015. However, other powerful artillery systems, including 2S4 mortars, are known to have been used in that siege. One of the lesser-known war zones involving the TOS-1 is the long-running conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia over Nagorno-Karabakh. Russia has sold TOS-1 as to both sides in the conflict, Azerbaijan has 18 and Armenia was sold an unspecified number. Armenian media reported this year that an Azerbaijani TOS-1A was destroyed in fighting in April after firing rockets on the position of Karabakh separatists. Both sides claim the other initiated the skirmish. Are weapons deploying fuel air explosives munitions inherently inhumane? While there is a debate to be at whether one manner of killing and harming human beings in war is inherently more unacceptable than another and should be banned, the more yes, proximate concern course. with heavier fey weapons that create very large blasts is that they are inherently indiscriminate. A TOS-1 rocket barrage will wipe out everything within the 200 by 300 meter blast zone. This is problematic when the weapon is employed against targets amid an urban civilian population, typical of much of the fighting in Iraq, yeah, Syria, and Ukraine. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day. Oh my goodness, that's much love and respect to our uh, Russian uh, friends. And I was impressed with the video itself, especially uh, the one who just uh, narrated the information with regards to the video, with regards to the weapon of Russia, how it was like uh, can uh, damage to can damage these things to people, especially to the to the place. But I hope and we pray that uh, we should practice uh, peace and love. I hope that uh, war will not be exist in the world. It's another a lot of civilians will be the victim of war, and we should pray and hope that there's no war in the future will happen. I, yes, I, I I appreciate that. Uh, this weapon exists for a uh, future like defense or their preparation of something will happen to, uh, in the future such an amazing video and information i get uh, some a lot of information that in, in will it inculcate in my mind because the way how it was said about this uh, video such an amazing one it really gives me an idea uh, with regards to this video especially the term also thermobaric it was used before when a Russian like going to uh, when Russian going to Afghanistan and I enjoyed watching this type of video guys especially with uh, such information that uh, you really know more about uh, Russia about their weaponry how they been used and what are those things the function of those of this weaponry of Russia that has oh my god thank you so much and if you want to see the full video and connect also with the owner of the video i'll put in the description box below so that you can connect also with the owner of the video and watch the full video thank you so much and pass it back to our russian friends have a good day everyone bye bye guys